Lady Shaka, are you ready to spill some tea? Yes, I motherfucking am. Then let's get into it, bitch. <laughs> She's giving today. What's good? It's tea time with a girl, Maya Memi, where I'm here to talk about whatever the fuck I want. Speaking of, we have Lady Shaka in the building. Give it up for Lady Shaka, guys! Thank you. How are we doing, baby? We're doing good. Introduce yourself yeah. to the viewers. My name is Lady Shaka. My pronouns are she, her. And um, yeah, I'm a DJ, an artist. Mm -hmm. I moved here in 2016. And then like five years on, I'm like in the queer scene with you people. Pe ah! Five years on, bitch. Thank you. Shit, you're out here giving the London girls a run for their money on ah! their own turf. In fact, I got beef with you about that, but we'll talk about it. Excuse later. me. <laughs> um, I thought we were friends. <laughs> you know? So babes, you are the Pacific Club Queen. The people need to know, how did you start? I started DJing in 2018. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I wanna, I wanna do a set. I'm gonna like practice and teach myself how to DJ. So I spent like two weeks like constantly like practicing the set. Then when it came to my leaving party, I did my first DJ set and I was like, oh my God, I fucking love this. Like, it was such a vibe. Fast forward like two weeks later, I went back to New Zealand and I lied to everyone. I was like, yeah, I'm a DJ in London, like blah, blah, blah. I started getting booked for gigs. Like, I'm all, all, my, all my friends were like running events and shit. And I was like, yeah, just put me on the lineup. So I just started DJing and that's when Filth started. So I played the first, very first Filth. Okay. And from there, it just kept building and building. And I just kept practicing and learning more. And then when I'd watch other people DJ, I'd be like, okay, I see their technique. Let mm -hmm. me try that and see how I can like make it my own. No, yeah. literally, I didn't yeah. realize that there was so much more to DJing than turning knobs. Right. When I thought it was just turning knobs, I thought, okay, that's fine because I do that every night. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but then I realized there's a lot more going on, Exactly. Bitch. You know, it's a real skill out here. And I just think it's amazing that there's a whole crew of us bad bitches really out here doing it. So, has DJing helped you, like, in terms of getting dick, getting guys? Because me, when <laughs> I DJ, I just feel like I'm the baddest bitch in the club, and I feel like all the guys are on me. Even if they don't want to make it obvious that they're on me, they're so fucking on me, and I live for it. Big it's like, hurt. I just get to be at the decks and pick which one I, which one <laughs> I want to go with. I'll get on the mic and be like, hey, come to the front. <laughs> if you're cute, I say come to the motherfucking front, what? But a lot of them are there with their girlfriends, and I'm not with that. Leave them at home, guys. Um, Leave your girls at home. Listen, yeah. I remember this one gig distinctly. I was playing at like a bashment gig back home. Yeah. And this guy literally was like, can I dagger you while I was DJing? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Lifted my leg up. I had one leg up and I was getting daggered while I was like turning the knobs. Like, it's like. That is but I, that's, I, I love that shit. Like when people are like, but it was nice that they asked first. Consent you is know, key. You know, like consent is key. Consent is key. Don't just touch. Make sure you ask. Otherwise you're going to get like dug in the face. Like, How has your transness informed your experience in the music industry thus far? Like, right. what's tea? Is there any tea? I think, so for me, outside of for me, I think I identify mostly with the word femme queen. Okay. So for me, femme queen is a, it's a, well, it is a word that came from ballroom that was a way of talking about trans women yeah. and describing us as queens and yeah. as femme queens, yeah. you know? So at what point did you feel comfortable to start talking more about your identity as a femme queen? Right. Well, I think when I was in high school, like I just started my transition, like mm. I was transitioning in high school. Oh, so you so, were a like, So you were a baby. Yeah. Well, like I, yeah, I started like medically transitioning in like my like final year of high school. Wow. And um, people were really supportive. Like I had like a whole lot of people that were like. Like the, the like the full on like straight straight hood boys were like still my friends too you know oh like God. and I thought I would have got like a lot of rejection but like from the beginning of high school I was always presenting as a femme queen anyways right. it just was like I hadn't officially like mm -hmm. done anything medically or done anything in terms of like changing any documentation mm. um, but it was cool so I had that support from a young age from like my my peers and my friends so I've got some cards on oh. here that I think we should just spill some tea about. These are so conveniently, by the grace of God, pink, white, and blue. I don't know why wow. they're trying to do transgender flag on here, because ah! I'm a cis woman. Exactly. <laughs> with a vagina in a womb. Exactly. I don't know why I'm I feel like I'm doing terror. Eyes. I know, that's so hot. But You're I'm holding these really tight. I know. 
so I grew up in a predominantly Christian family. Oh, okay. And then when I started to get older and learn more about like indigenous history, what happened to my ancestors, how we ended up, you know, having that relationship with Christianity, it kind of started to change my views and I started to look more and more in depth into my own spirituality. So for me, mm. the way I look at it is like, I believe in a higher being, mm. not necessarily a person, not necessarily a name, mm. but it's like giving that energy to like the, the divine, like the mm. creator, you know? So for me, I, I look at things from an indigenous point of view, like when we do our karakia, our prayers, our incantations, it's to thank what was in the past. It's to thank my ancestors. It's to thank what they used to believe. I feel like I, the, the deeper I go into my transition, the more witchy I get. People don't deep, but as a trans person, when you're walking through the streets mm. and you're walking outside in the world, you are literally having to meditate, like to shut all of the voices and the looks and just the general feeling that you're doing something wrong, to shut all of that out. Yeah. Um, you have to meditate. It's like you have to just block everything and you have to just focus on yourself. And really and truly that is a form of meditation. That, on top of the fact that I'm now way more in touch with my divine feminine and I'm embracing her, you know, and I'm also transcending the binary of, of, of what we put, what this society says our body is. Yeah. And it makes sense that you naturally were there and even me that I naturally had a level of it before because trans people prior to colonization, we were looked up to as the spiritual guides, oh, absolutely. as the spiritual leaders, you know, across most of the tribes, yeah. in most civilizations. Like the, basically the entire world, like we were healers. We still are healers. You know, before white people came and took over and just, yeah, but anyway. Red flags. Mm. Okay, so this is a little daily daily one. What is your daily life saying? Listen, my dating life is non-existent. Okay, cool. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's non-existent. That's I the best choose. way sometimes. A lot of people are like, are you seeing anyone? I'm like, no, I'm not. And they're like, oh, is that like by choice? And I'm like, no, it's not by choice. Yeah. I'm, I just, <laughs> I'm just not seeing anyone at the moment. Oh, babe. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. Lady Shack is single. Slide in her DMs right now at Lady Shack on Instagram. Very well girl. Message me. Yeah, what are the requirements? <laughs> Let them know. As long as, for me, it's like, as long as you're a nice person, oh. you ain't judgmental, like... Come through. Okay, that's lovely. You know. For me, no, don't. <laughs> you don't be broken coming in my DMs, okay? I'm an expensive bitch. Thank you. It's the obsession. When someone's fucking obsessed with you, like that's a red flag for me. That's like a put off. Like if okay. they're like, oh my God, I love your skin. I mm -hmm. love your hair. Like, oh my God, I love your story. It's like, okay, you're a bit creepy, you know? Mm. When, they, when they're like that involved and they know so mm -hmm. much about you or they're just like, Fetish, like it's the fetishizing. Like it's when I know, I know someone's fetishizing me, it's either because they know I'm trans or they fetishizing me just because I'm a woman of color. Right. And they're like, oh yes. Like I've I've had someone literally say to me, I want to fuck the native out of you. Literally. This is the thing for me. Red flags are red flags, but I find a lot of red flags attractive. So it's like I like a guy that is really obsessed with me to the yeah. point where it's a bit psychopathic because it's like I. I, cause what, is it the attention that they, they're giving you? Yeah, and I just feel like you should be. Yeah, you should that be. That just tells me that you know what you've got. Exactly. Actually, let me take that back. It makes it sound like I, I want people to be not interested in me. <laughs> no, I want you to be obsessed with me. I want you to love be me. Be obsessed with my girl. Be obsessed, but I just don't want you to fetishize me. I think that's the more the point right, I'm saying. Right, right, right. Also, like, right now, a red flag that's really, t really telling me on is like an aggressive guy, which is strange. Sissy. <laughs> If you babe. need help, just wave a flag. Wave, I, wave, wave the trans flag and I'll be I, there. <laughs> my name is Maya Memi and I need help because I'm attracted to all the biggest dickheads. But that's just how I roll. Like for me, you need a criminal record. You need to have been to at least two jails. Um, and if you're legitimized, that's cool, but I still need you to be able to pull it out when you need to, do you know what I mean? But I think maybe that's an insecurity that I have as a trans woman because it's like, I feel like I need protecting. I think I, I, I understand this 100% yeah. because I genuinely like security guards. Mm. And I don't know whether it was because like when I'm, a when I'm DJing and I go outside, they're the only sober person to talk to outside. So I'm just like talking to security guard. <laughs> but usually they're like massive, like, you know, like, got, got, and they're, they're always like usually cute. Yeah. And then I'm like, do I like security guards because of the idea of protection? And like, I don't have to protect myself out on mm -hmm. these streets. 
So maybe it is a bit of that. My friend was like, I think it's a protection thing. But I also like someone who's tall that can lift me up and be like, Yeah. Okay. I think it's just that energy thing. But I think it's really interesting, like this, this, um, attraction of like femininity and masculinity yeah. because I honestly didn't think that it was going to be like that when I started to transition I thought that I was going to say RIP to my sex life because obviously I've grown up to believe that femininity in my body is not attractive little mm -hmm. did I know when I went on tinder it was a riot like it was very much 100% match way that's what it was giving do you think it gave you some confidence it or? gave me confidence but it yeah. was also a mess Okay, how are we feeling about cisgendered heterosexual women? Because me personally, I feel like when we're talking about trans rights and we're talking about trans oppression, a lot of the time we're coming really, really hard for the cis het men, which they deserve. Yeah. Because ultimately, they are the key to unlocking our oppression, but they don't want to do it because they're pussy. But cishet women, I feel like we let them off a lot, but I'm ready to talk about it. There are so many conversations being had carelessly about, oh, what would you do if your man was fucking a trans woman? What would you do if your man was gay? Could you date a bi guy? Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. And I just think these conversations are so reductive and add so much pressure onto this idea of men needing to be super straight, you know, or yeah. this society's version of straight. And as much as I love the girls, you bitches aren't helping a lot of the time. There's so many girls out there who are like, we love you, we support you, and they like date really transphobic or homophobic mm -hmm. men. And I'm like, how can you be my friend as a trans woman but date someone who's fucking homophobic or queerphobic or transphobic and isn't here for us and doesn't right. have the fucking time of day. Right. You know, or like they just like, they, they, they're like, well, I like Shaka. Mm. I support Shaka. I love Shaka, but I have a problem with even anyone else who's trans. Right. Because I don't see them the same as her, you or know? Or trans women that don't pass like you do. Ex that's the thing. There's this whole, it's, it's fucking sad. I've read this thing and it was like about people passing. Some people don't want to pass. Mm -hmm. You know, some people choose. That's them. They're just comfortable being the way they look without Period. medically transition. And you don't need to medically transition. No. Like, you don't have to be passable in the, the eyes of fucking society. No, you trans know? people are beautiful. Trans folk are beautiful regardless. regardless. And yeah. if we were living in a pre-colonial society, it's like we wouldn't be having to do nothing, bitch. I would be, I would be in India, I would just throw my sari on, throw my bindi on, I'd be out here getting all the trade that I wanted to get. And I think that sometimes cis women get threatened. They put men and trans women in that same category. Right. You know, they don't see trans women as just another woman. No. They see you as a part of that problem, you know? Right. And it's just like, but then they like openly say it to you, but they're like, but yeah, we, I don't see you as trans. Mm -hmm. So like, it's fine. You're not one of them. They're like, oh yeah, who cares if she's like trans and she dresses like right. that. She's still giving you cunt. She's still like fierce as fuck. Okay. That was one word I used to fucking hate. Fierce. <laughs> I used to hate bitches coming up to me and be like, <laughs> They're like, they'll be like, they're like, oh my God, you're so fierce. And I'm like, oh. I still hate that shit. I fucking hate it. Because it's, it's like them basically clocking you mm -hmm. and then being like, oh, you're such a fierce, like trans strong woman. And it's like, babe, I'm just like anybody else. That is the worst thing. You Let's know? talk about that. I need you cishet women to listen very loudly and clearly. Do not come up to me and tell me I should be a makeup artist or a hairstylist just because you've yeah. got that I'm trans and you feel like that's the only things we could do. It's like, I know you're saying you're right. so beautiful for a trans woman, not you're just a beautiful per Like you just look beautiful, you know? Right. Or what I get sometimes is like, you're so confident. It's like, bitch, Please. why would I not be confident? So my eyes are on, it's like, I'm like, gorgeous. I'm you intelligent. You are gorgeous, exactly. And my pussy is tight as fuck. You look so good, bitch. Oh, thanks. Your... I mean, so I'm do you. I'm loving these embezzled jean situation. Listen, oh. I bought them like this from trade. You're lying. <laughs> yeah. As in trade, Someone as just in... threw them out, like at the, you know, the charity store? Trade, I thought trade. you were talking about trade as in men. No, 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 yeah. <laughs> I was like, girl, what type of trade? The, the trade was selling them to me. He was I'm like, these look cute on you. I'm screaming. <laughs> no, you look hot, bitch. Thanks, girl. Me, I'm in my gorgeous Everpress t-shirt by Toxic Girlfriend. This is as sex symbol, so obviously I have to put it on. Duh. It you says the, my name on the it. The icon, the symbol. The icon, the symbol. That is my exactly. name. Exactly, I'm glad you understand it. <laughs> These are really cute.
They're so fucking cute. It's, it's giving regal. It's giving let's take them afterwards. It's giving colonization. I'm here for it. 